Mussels aren't just an elegant entree at a seafood restaurant. In the Great Lakes, invasive mussels are a major threat to underwater ecosystems, infrastructure, and local economies. Zebra and quagga mussels are invasive, clam-like animals that live underwater and have two protective shells. They attach themselves to underwater surfaces and filter food and nutrients out of the water, often surrounded by a blanket of their friends. A diversity of freshwater native mussels exist in the Great Lakes region, but invasive zebra and quagga mussels are the ones that cause trouble. Both species were likely carried to the Great Lakes from Eurasia in the ballast water tanks of ocean-going cargo ships. Thumbnail-sized zebra mussels were first spotted in Lake Erie and Lake St. Clair in the 1980s. They quickly colonized shallower areas of the Great Lakes, growing on boats, docks, and other underwater structures. The cold-hardy quagga mussels came next. Both species now coat shipwrecks, clog pipes, and quagga mussels blanket the bottoms of most of the Great Lakes. Lake Superior has a much smaller population. In addition to damaging underwater surfaces, invasive mussels also hog food and nutrients that should be available to the whole food chain. They've radically altered the underwater ecosystems of the Great Lakes. So how do you control a small, persistent creature that attaches to every available surface along with hundreds of thousands of its cousins? Right now, no easy solution exists for removing these invaders from the Great Lakes. Instead, people are adapting to live with them through ongoing management strategies. Power plants, drinking water facilities, and other utilities rely on underwater pipes to draw in or discharge water, pipes that mussels would love to colonize. Utilities have developed chemical treatments, filters, special coatings, and other tactics to keep mussels from clogging their pipes. They sometimes hire divers to manually scrape away mussels. Water and power supplies are crucial, so these treatments are worth the investment. Meanwhile, scientists continue working on new chemical and biological tools that can help control mussel populations in specific sections of open water. In a few inland lakes in Texas and Virginia, experimental treatments relying on chemicals or smothering plastic mats have been very successful. However, these methods are expensive, require lots of work, and may not be feasible in all bodies of water. And when chemicals are involved, there's always a risk of damaging other aquatic life in the lake. Researchers continue refining these methods in hopes of finding long-term solutions. In the Great Lakes, invasive mussels have already made themselves at home, at least for now. But we can still help keep them out of other inland lakes and waterways. Outreach campaigns like Stop Aquatic Hitchhikers help educate boaters and anglers to clean, drain, and dry their boats and equipment before moving from one lake to another, so hitchhiking mussels don't go along for the ride. There are many people in the U.S. and Canada working hard to research zebra and quagga mussel solutions. Groups such as the Binational Invasive Mussel Collaborative bring researchers, decision makers, and other specialists together to build knowledge, share new techniques, and strategize for the future of invasive mussel control. Invasive mussels pose a daunting challenge, but public outreach, technological breakthroughs, regional partnerships, and some old-fashioned elbow grease can help us make a difference in the Great Lakes and beyond.